Hello and welcome to High Sugar. Today's podcast looks at superfoods for diabetics. Enjoy. Blueberries. Cranberries. Apples. Watermelon, honeydew, and rock melon. Raspberries. Red grapefruit. Tomatoes. Asparagus. Carrots. Broccoli. Red onion. Spinach. Fish. Soy. Yogurt. Flour. 
flaxseed. Nuts. Beans. Oatmeal. Hi, Christy Jacobs here. I'm a leading certified nutritionist in the Trim Down Club, and today I want to address five foods that you've been told are healthy for you that can actually increase unwanted weight gain and cause other serious health problems. Now, these five foods are manufactured by big companies, and since these companies have a lot of influence and pull in the media, you may want to watch this presentation right now until the end, while it's still showing. So, let's get started. You're probably eating these foods daily, and they not only add to those extra inches around your belly, but they can stop you from losing weight altogether. When you eliminate them, the excess weight falls off naturally. I often joke with my husband that we really don't live in the information age as much as we live in the misinformation age. I say that because there's a lot of misleading information floating around when it comes to being healthy and losing weight. I've tried everything you've tried, the diet pills, counting calories, specially prepared meals, and none of it worked. Not to mention, I felt like I was starving myself most of the time on these diets. I started feeling like there was no hope, that my body was destined to be supersized. I was ready to throw in the towel and accept my fate of never being thin. But through my studies in the nutritional field, I discovered some key factors that keep the fat on. As soon as I started eliminating certain foods, foods that we've consistently been told were healthy for us, the fat just melted away. This information may shock you, but you can start using it immediately to lose weight for good, especially belly fat, whether you're currently on a diet or not. You'll learn about genetically modified or GM foods and see how certain foods can cause hormonal imbalances and keep the fat on. What you eat can affect your hormones, negatively or positively, and what you put into your body has more to do with you being healthy and losing weight than anything else. Specific foods that are labeled healthy for you can actually keep that fat on, cause hormonal imbalances, increase cardiovascular disease, and make it almost impossible to lose weight as long as you keep eating them. In fact, you have all the answers right in your own kitchen. You just need to educate yourself on what eating healthy is really all about, because it's not what most people think it is. It's not about diet health bars or eating berries, celery, or carrots. When you consume the right carbs with the right amount of proteins, the fat will burn off naturally. It's that simple. I'm going to show you how to melt those unwanted pounds without eating skimpy frozen meals, starving yourself with fad diets, or even doing exhausting exercises, as long as you avoid eating these five foods. And I'm betting three of these five foods will shock you, like they did me. But let me start with the one that isn't a food. It's actually a drink. A drink you've been told over and over how healthy it is for you. It's concentrated orange juice. 
Have you ever seen those commercials that tell you starting your day with a big glass of concentrated orange juice is a really good idea? The truth is, it's probably one of the worst things you can do to your body. And it's not just OJ. Most concentrated fruit juices can cause problems around the waistline. These include concentrated juices like cranberry juice, apple juice, and other concentrated fruit juices. You might be wondering how is this possible? Isn't fruit good for you? Well, I knew the problem wasn't the fruit, so I discovered how fruits are concentrated into juice. You see, many companies remove the fiber and other nutritious elements out of the fruit during the concentrating process. The fiber in fruit normally reduces the spike in blood sugar. With the fiber taken out, you are essentially left with sugar water. And when your blood sugar is too high, it puts your body in fat storing mode essentially telling your body to store anything you eat as fat. Blood sugar levels are directly related to insulin levels. Insulin is also known as your fat storing hormone. This hormonal imbalance with insulin can cause weight gain because of the raised blood sugar levels. Most concentrated fruit juices have just as much or even more sugar than soda. Contrary to what commercials tell you, starting your day with a big glass of concentrated juice is a really bad decision. The excess sugar can spike your blood sugar and put your body in fat storing mode. Excess sugar in our diet is probably the number one thing to be careful of, and it's not just concentrated juice you have to worry about. A lot of processed foods have excess sugar in them, and it's disguised in scientific sounding names like high fructose corn syrup, dextran, dextrose, and fruit juice concentrate, like I just mentioned. Excess sugar in your diet can cause your blood sugar levels to spike, which leads to an insulin overload and puts your body in fat storing mode. Not only does it cause weight gain, but high blood sugar for a prolonged period of time can also lead to hyperglycemia and diabetes, especially type 2 diabetes, which many studies indicate is closely associated with weight gain. Diabetes is already the seventh largest cause of death in the U.S., and I'm afraid this number will just continue to rise until we change our eating habits. And excess sugar is just one of the problems. The Food and Drug Administration has warned that there are over 50 different known poisons and toxic substances in the average American's shopping cart. These chemicals combined cause hundreds of different diseases and can even be fatal in some cases. Now, the second fat-storing food can also increase your weight, but it also has far more serious health risks. Fat-storing food number two is margarine. Like many oils and spreads, most margarines contain trans fat. Trans fats are formed when hydrogen is added to make it solid and less likely to spoil. It's added to prolong shelf life. But ingesting these trans fats can increase the risk for cardiovascular disease as well as weight gain. Cardiovascular disease is on the rise, with heart disease being the number one killer in America. Trans fats have also been proven to increase your LDL levels, which are commonly known as bad cholesterol, while at the same time wiping out your HDL levels or your good cholesterol. So it's a double whammy on your body. It can cause you to gain weight, wipe out your good cholesterol, increase your bad cholesterol by building up plaque in your arteries and do more harm than good. As a certified nutritionist for the Trim Down Club, I teach people to adjust what they're eating to more healthy alternatives, like butter instead of margarine. Butter has fat in it too, but it's a saturated fat that your body can burn for fuel instead of building up plaque in your arteries like trans fats can do. You'll start eating foods that don't wreak havoc on your hormones, your arteries, or your blood sugar levels, and your body will immediately thank you as it sheds inches and melts the extra pounds away. You'll learn more about that in a minute. Next, let's get to fat storing food number three, which was quite a shock for me. It's whole wheat bread. Are you surprised? I was too. It's not just whole wheat bread either. It's other breads, pastas, and other comfort foods that all add up to making it very hard to get lean and healthy. Comfort foods are usually those high-carb meals we all love. Many comfort foods include apple pie, cakes, muffins, pastas, and pizza. I knew that high-carb comfort foods can make you fat. But if you're like me, you love these foods, and you don't want to give them up. Well, as it turns out, you don't have to. 
My own problems losing weight are what led me to become a certified nutritionist. I could never seem to get rid of those extra 20 to 30 pounds of belly fat. I stopped eating the sweets and was eating healthier, and I would even exercise, which helped lose some of the belly fat. But it always came back when I couldn't continue my routine because my life just got too busy again. There's a saying in the fitness industry that you can't exercise your way out of poor nutrition. What that means is that no amount of exercise will help you if you're not eating nutrient-dense food that your body needs to metabolize. And I always thought my weight had a lot to do with the carbs I was eating. But the real key was understanding how my body metabolizes these carbohydrates and what causes these cravings in the first place. When carbs are combined with the right amount of other foods, like proteins, it doesn't raise your blood sugar levels and puts your body in fat storing mode. You see, there are two kinds of carbs, low carbs, which are your greens, most veggies, and some fruits. And then there's high carbs, the ones I love and didn't want to give up. Things like pasta, bread, sweets, and even beer and wine. And when you eat them by themselves, they can cause you to gain weight. Before I became a nutritionist, here's what my family and I would eat on a typical day. Pancakes for breakfast, a burger for lunch, and chicken for dinner. But the problem with these meals is that they don't have the right ratio of high carbs and low carbs to protein. Let's take a look at breakfast. It's essentially all high carbs. That means it's likely to raise my blood sugar level, putting my body into fat storing mode. Eating high carb meals tends to elevate blood sugar levels, basically telling your body to store everything you eat as fat. And that's what was happening with me at almost every meal. I just had to customize my meals to add the right balance of proteins with some low carbs and the high carbs to balance out my meal and keep my blood sugar level. And I didn't have to give up anything. I can still have a burger for lunch and my family's favorite chicken dish for dinner. By combining the right ratios of carbs and proteins, it causes your body to burn fat rather than store it. Let me explain something else that feeds into these cravings for comfort foods. Cortisol is another hormone that can cause that sweet tooth for these comfort foods. Cortisol is a hormone produced by your adrenal glands in response to deal with stressful situations. This is the body's way of ramping up adrenaline levels to move your body out of harm's way. It's what gives you that extra boost of energy that helps you in an emergency situation, like running out of a burning building. But here's the thing. Stress is stress to this hormone. It doesn't know the difference between a life-threatening physical situation and a mentally stressful situation. And when you feel mentally stressed, your body is flooded with cortisol, just as if you were in immediate physical danger. In a physically stressful situation, like being inside a building on fire, the higher levels of cortisol are burned off by the activity of running out of the building. That's what it's there for, to give you that extra boost of energy. But in mentally stressful situations, like being under a tight deadline at work, relationship problems, or even being overweight, your body continues to produce cortisol to handle the stress. Since this excess cortisol is not being burned up by physical action, it creates an imbalance that increases your appetite and cravings for sugar. Scientific studies have shown that when stress levels are high, it increases your appetite your cravings for sugar, and this is typically stored in the abdominal region. Which is why the quickest way most of us deal with stress is to reach for these high-carb comfort foods. So the more stress, the more weight gain, and it typically winds up around the belly. Then I learned another thing, and this was really hard to understand at first. Before becoming a nutritionist, I was always trying to get rid of that extra 20 to 30 pounds of belly fat through different diets. Most of these diets restricted what I could eat. As it turns out, those diets didn't have me eating enough. See, when you restrict yourself from eating for a long time, like I did on those diets, your blood sugar drops and your body is convinced it's starving. When your blood sugar levels drop, it puts you back in fat storing mode. But by snacking in between meals throughout the day, you can keep your blood sugar levels balanced and keep your body in the fat burning zone all day long. Your meals just have to be balanced with the right amounts of protein and carbs. 
This way your blood sugar levels don't go too high and throw your hormones out of whack or go too low and put you into starvation mode. Now think about these first three foods for a second. Orange juice, margarine, and whole wheat bread. How many people probably have this every morning for breakfast? Are you starting to see why it can be so hard to lose weight? Can you see how the choices made available to you are sabotaging your weight loss goals? And this problem isn't just a physical one. The psychological factors can sometimes be even worse. Ask yourself if you ever experienced any of these feelings. It's hopeless. I'm doing everything and the weight still won't come off. I'm never going to look as good as I did before. Go out. I don't want to go out. I really don't feel like doing anything. Buy new clothes? What's the point? Nothing ever fits. When I hear these comments, I know the frustration because that's how I felt when I was trying everything and nothing was working. But now that I know how your hormones can go out of whack by eating certain foods, I've just tweaked my eating habits and stopped the endless cycle of dieting. And you can too. It's that easy. When hormones continue to be imbalanced, it can cause unwanted effects like weight gain. And it gets worse because the more pounds you pack on, the less adiponectin your body produces. Adiponectin is known as your fat-burning hormone. The British Journal of Sports Medicine published a study showing a direct connection between lower levels of fat with higher adiponectin levels in your body. As your body stores more fat, the less of this natural fat-burning hormone it produces. So it's another double whammy. It can be a domino effect. When your blood sugar goes too high or low, it can cause an insulin imbalance and put your body into fat storing mode. As you gain weight, your body tends to produce less adiponectin, your natural fat burner. Then add in the day-to-day -day modern stress we all live with and the excess cortisol your body produces because of it, and you start to see why weight loss can be so difficult. But it doesn't have to be that way. Kidneys are a pair of about 12 centimeter long bean-shaped organs. They lie at level of your waist on the back side of your body. Every human being has two kidneys which lie on the right and left side of the spine. The kidneys produce urine. The urine flows from the kidney through the ureta to the bladder. The bladder passes out the urine through the ureta. Kidneys have three important functions. They filter harmful waste products from the blood and drain them out via urine. They balance the level of fluids and salt in the body. They produce hormones. Chronic kidney disease occurs when there is a change in the structure or function of the kidney. An infection, damage, tumor or side effect of certain medications can cause kidney diseases. A kidney disease often has great implications on health and the functioning of the rest of the body. If you're suffering from a kidney disease, kidney failure can occur. In that case, your kidneys are not able to filter waste products and fluid adequately from your blood and extract them from the body. When the kidneys don't function properly, you might have the following symptoms. Fatigue nausea and loss of appetite, skin itching, high blood pressure, difficulty in concentrating, difficulty in sleeping or excessive sleep, shortness of breath. If the kidney functions can't be restored and both kidneys fail, then dialysis is needed. It is necessary if the function of the kidneys is less than 10%. The function of your kidneys will be performed artificially. There are two major types of dialysis, hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. In hemodialysis, your blood is filtered through a dialysis machine outside your body. In peritoneal dialysis, a dialytic fluid is flushed through your abdominal cavity, extracting the waste products from your blood. An alternative for dialysis is kidney transplantation. You get a healthy kidney from someone.
your general practitioner can give you more information about the disorder and its possible treatments. Hi there, I'm Duncan Capishano, and you're about to find out a stack of information that will help you increase your kidney function and get your life back on track. Now, if you're serious about reversing kidney disease and getting your life back to normal, then it'll pay to stay to the end of this video. So who am I? I'm a second generation Australian naturopath, researcher and author with a passion for healing kidney disease. And my happy clients are saying I've discovered the solution to reversing kidney disease. Listen to what some of them have to say. My kidney function was at 9%, stage 5. I was dialysing Monday, Wednesday and Friday. I didn't want a kidney transplant. Within seven weeks, my kidney function went from 9%, stage 5, to 16%, stage 4, and dialyse Tuesday and Saturday to off dialysis within months. In mid-November, Dad, almost 90, was told that his kidney efficiency was 36%. On the 7th of January 2010, his new blood test results came through and his kidney efficiency is now 73%. Doctor said people of Dad's age should not have kidneys that efficient. You're about to learn how to reverse your impaired kidney function and heal your kidneys with this safe, scientifically proven, unique, step-by-step, -step, guaranteed method starting today. To put it simply, when your kidneys are not working efficiently, the toxins build up in your body, making you feel more unwell as time goes on. There are serious consequences to impaired kidney function. When you have impaired kidney function or kidney disease, you will be experiencing a wide range of symptoms. The most significant being overwhelming fatigue. You feel absolutely exhausted. Even if you haven't done anything, you feel totally drained. This may be from anemia, which is a consequence of kidney disease and can be treated. Changes in urination, getting up during the night to urinate, it may be foamy or bubbly, you may have to go more often with less urine that's dark and smelly, or with more urine that's light. Swelling, when your kidneys don't remove the extra fluid, your feet, ankles, legs, face and hands can swell. Skin rash and itching, your kidneys remove waste and toxins from your bloodstream. When you have impaired kidney function or kidney disease, the toxins come out in your skin causing a rash and itching. And if that's not enough, here are more distressing symptoms of kidney disease you may be experiencing right now. Headaches, disturbed sleep, nausea and vomiting, restless leg syndrome, chest pain due to inflammation around the heart, bone pain and fractures, decreased sex drive and erectile dysfunction. But I'm going to let you in on a little secret. As bad as those kidney symptoms may seem, if you don't treat your cause, then your efforts will be futile. That's the key to your healing. Treat your cause, heal your kidneys. Here are the main causes of kidney disease. Diabetes 1 and 2. This type of kidney disease is known as diabetic nephropathy. High blood pressure. If not controlled over time, high blood pressure, hypertension, can cause kidney damage. Glomerulonephritis. This is inflammation and damage to the kidney's filtration system which can cause kidney failure. Post-infectious conditions and lupus are among the causes of glomerulonephritis. Polycystic kidney disease. This is an hereditary disease where the kidneys grow cysts causing chronic kidney disease. OK, but before moving on, I can hear you saying, I thought kidney disease was irreversible. Well, you are right in some respects. There are no known medical treatments for healing chronic kidney disease. However, there are a variety of treatments for the symptoms. Some of these are controlling blood sugar levels in diabetes, treating hypertension, high blood pressure, with medication, taking diuretics to relieve the load on the kidneys. However, there can be complications with this. Dialysis peritoneal dialysis, dialysis through the abdomen lining, hemodialysis, the blood is circulated through a machine and cleaned before being put back into the body.